Good afternoon. My name is Andy Marler and I'm one of the directors of the Australian Passive House Association. I am very proud this afternoon to be able to be here to launch our new book, Passive House in Australia. Now, I'd love to be able to tell you all that the inspiration for this book was the desire to document the history of Passive House in Australia. And it is to some degree. I'd also love to be able to tell you that it was driven by a, a deep-seated desire to create a shareable document that would make the case for Passive House to those who were not that familiar with it yet. Um, and to do that in a visually compelling way with some very persuasive words written by some very clever people who weren't me. And it is. But the true reality is that we, of course, did just steal the idea from someone else. I'd like to thank Jason Quinn of Sustainable Engineering um, over in New Zealand. Um, for the book that he produced and launched at the last Passive, uh, South Pacific Passive House Conference in Wellington about 18 months ago now. And it's that book that really did in so many ways um, provide the basis for what we have done here with this one. Um, we've obviously had a few pandemic related issues during the production of this, but on the whole, this has actually led to a, what we believe is a much better outcome at the end of the day. So why? Um, well, why, why do the book for all of those reasons? We wanted to tell that story. We wanted to put it across in a way that is visually compelling. And for those who have hard copies, that, that is in a way that you can pass on and give, give to friends, give to clients, give to family, give to politicians. Um, the book itself is uh, very visual. Um, unsurprisingly, it's about buildings. And one of the most compelling ways to communicate that is always photography. Um, and there's some great imagery of some great projects. This is an Australian one, but we've got lots of examples from overseas as well, which we use to draw upon to explain around the things that are possible that we may not yet have done here yet. So this is a large building from Europe, very new building from Europe, um, and a lot of um, reference also to the older buildings because we feel that the conveying the breadth of Passive House's possibilities is incredibly important and retrofit obviously is a huge thing. So many of the buildings that will be here by 2050 are still are already here today. Um, we also feature this, the wonderful Gillies Hall building from Monash University in Melbourne, um, which many of you will know as the largest certified passive house building in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, it is a wonderful thing to be able to tell you today that you are actually incorrect in that belief. Um, recently, it has had that mantle taken away from it. Unfortunately for Monash University, it's been taken away by one of its own buildings. This is the Woodside Design and Technology, Technology and Design Building, sorry, um, which has re very recently received its certification. It's around two and a half times larger than Gillies Hall in terms of actual square meterage. Um, but as you can see from the design, it has lost none of the architectural awesomeness. Um, and I'm sure many of you will enjoy on Thursday afternoon listening to the project team talk in depth about, um, about the challenges and obviously the successes um, that that project has gone through. So the book itself is structured in a similar way to the New Zealand book in that it talks its way through the why of Passive House. It talks around the benefits of building better. Um, we consciously chose not to focus on the negatives of current practice. Uh, we really did want to present Passive House as being a solution and we didn't feel there was a, a huge amount of benefit into, into bagging current things that may not work particularly well. We really did want to put it as a, um, as a, as a beacon, a light on the hill. And as you'll see from the very um, the final image or final words on the back page, um, there is a, there's a purpose to that. The, the book talks through the standard, it talks through the certification process, and, and it really talks about how quality assurance is at the heart of Passive House and that getting what you pay for uh, methodology. It talks about it being collaborative rather than being competitive, although obviously there's some competitive people going on around trying to get the most airtight building in the country, but that's a different kind of competitive that we think is okay. We mean it's not competitive with the other things in the world, say like a Green Star or a Living Building Challenge, those kind of issues. It talks uh, quite um, at length about resilience and health and the benefits around those topics as, as well. So really presenting all the things that Passive Haste is. 
Now, you'll be unsurprised to know that it does talk about some of the technical aspects, but it's not a technical book. It's not intended as a technical book, and it's certainly not intended as a how to design a passive house book. It really is aimed at the uh, people who are trying to understand why they would do the, why I build a passive house and, and the benefits, and enough of the technical to understand what matters, but um, and also to know what they don't know, and then go off and consult with whomever may know. Um, we, um, we go through those technical aspects, um, as you'd expect, and this um, diagram is um, wonderfully produced by Mia Radic, who I will talk about shortly. Um, choose to build better. It's a theme that's been kicking around in Australia with slightly different words attached to it, especially since the bushfires kicked in almost a year ago now. And we've, um, we have got a section around this topic and it, uh, it touches on various aspects. One of the things that this section does is it looks at some of the things happening in other places of the world. Um, Vancouver, the image on the left, China, the image on the right, and really just drawing on, on what's happening in other places of the world, not as a way to say that the other places are better than Australia, as people often think that um, line is trotted out for, but really just to say it's doable, it's possible, we're not on our own, we're not making this up from the start, and actually the fact that these people have done these things before is incredibly helpful to us. And there's various people speaking during this week's conference from Vancouver and from North America and from Europe who have been involved in doing these projects and therefore we can learn and therefore these things are not the insurmountable challenge that many people may think that they are. We talk about retrofit. Um, retrofit's incredibly important because those buildings already exist and we dedicate a bit of time to talking as to, as to some, of those, um, some of those projects and some of those specifics. Now, as with the New Zealand book, a large section of the book is dedicated to case studies. Not every certified house in Australia is in the book. Every certified project was given the opportunity, but for various reasons, not everybody could provide the information that was needed. Um, either they didn't have it or they didn't have, have it within the timeframes that were available. So you can see from the map here, the number of the projects that are featured in the book. Um, and there's a broad, um, broad range. Um, from the earlier one being Superpod over in, um, in in Victoria to Belbray, which was the first certified passive house, uh, Enerfit um, project, which is currently um, the only one, although that may soon very well change. Um, Heathmont, a project that just demonstrates that passive house really, really does not need to be a simple box. And yeah, it made it much harder, but it's still doable and it looks awesome. And therefore it really enforces passive house can be made to do anything that you want. Um, just takes skill and a really good builder. This lovely project from Western Australia, in the interest of diversity, we'll let the West Australians into the project. Um, this is a lovely little project recently featured in the Sanctuary magazine as well, and, and partly featured because of, um, because of its cost effective construction as well. Our Woods has received a lot of publicity in the recent years. Um, it's in a fairly cold place and there's some fantastic imagery of that, um, which is one of the reasons it gets the publicity. But again, technically quite a difficult building, a building again that is not typical passive house. It's not a, it's not a box. Uh, Sapphire in Falconbridge in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales is um, the first certified passive house built in the flame zone area. Obviously blending environmental performance, health, comfort, and bushfire resistance is a fairly unique Australian challenge, although California has similar ones as well. Um, so a bit of a leader in, in that sphere. And, and that's a project delivered by one of um, AFA's other um, directors during this year, the Blue Ego Homes. Um, the Torrens Early Learning Center in Melbourne if you were going to build any building at all that was going to have great indoor air quality, you really would want to think it's going to be something that you're going to put your kids inside for 40 hours a week. Um, this is a trailblazer project in my mind. Um, I really hope that we see a huge uptick um, in the quality of childcare centres. Um, from personal experience, I can say they're certainly not the best places to be internally. Um, so hopefully this will um, get other uh, providers to, to get up to speed with these topics. The Fern in Sydney is um, quite a trailblazer in many ways. Uh, it's an incredibly tight site. It was an incredibly difficult project full stop before it was a certified passive house. Um, 
and it has reached all of those lofty goals. It's also interesting in that it's one of the few pacifist projects in the country to actually be sold, um, as you'll get the gist from many of the projects in the book, most of them are single family homes or owned by people with long-term interests being the university, and therefore they're not often traded. So it's, um, it's a unique project in a series of ways, that being just one of them. This is one of the projects that I was involved in and it's small. So again, just debunking the myth that you need these big boxes and that the bigger is easier and bigger sure is easier, but um, showing that these can come at any shape or size. And finally, um, the re recently shifted into the case study section from the future projects section due to its recent certification, the Woodside Building for Technology and Design that I'd already mentioned at Monash University. So now, we have a section in the book called Other Projects. Um, this section really is designed to sort of pinpoint a few things. Some of them are future, some of them are current, and some of them, one of them is actually quite old, but they're in there because they're the projects that have really kind of put a f uh, flag in the, um, flag on the hill. Um, the Passive Butterfly Project by Cameron Munro in Melbourne narrowly missed out on actually getting certification, but has done wonderful things both within the passive house community and wider community about the things that are possible. And that's really been quite useful. And the certification would have been great, but the impact of this project is huge regardless. The Sacred Heart Primary School is hardly known of outside of a core few within the passive house world. This is a David Halford project. And yet it's all, again, almost made certification, but it's a fantastic building for delivering fantastic results. The Soldiers Museum at um, ben Memorial at uh, Bendigo, um, again, just showing the breadth of it of passive house projects that are underway in the country. Titan is a, is a single family home. It's another David Halford project. He takes out the prize for the most projects in the book, funnily enough, with more than twice the number of projects than anyone else. Um, and again, this is in here, it's renovations and they're trickier, they're harder, they're arguably more important. Um, and it's just good to see these projects getting up and, and also becoming successful. And the final one worthy of uh, mention is the Vanquish project in Brisbane. And this will be, um, this potentially will be one of the, the first certified projects in a really humid place in Australia and therefore um, definitely worthy of a mention. And even if it were to not quite get there, um, it certainly um, set some fantastic benchmarks as to how to deal with um, in particular, obviously, the humidity issues that, that Brisbane has. Now, I would like to thank the people who've, without this book, wouldn't have happened. Um, that's Jason Quinn for um, the initial inspiration and also for the templates and all the behind the house stuff, behind back of scenes stuff that he has provided to us. I'd like to thank Claire Parry for the, um, for the words that she wrote. Um, she wrote the initial text of the book. I'd like to thank Talina Edwards for a myriad of helpful things along the way. Um, certainly um, the best sounding board um, that I've ever had for making a project happen. Um, I have an unbelievably deep felt um, respect, admiration and just debt uh, to Mia Raddick in particular. Uh, without her, this book definitely would not have happened. Um, she has coordinated the majority of the case studies, the photography, the permissions, and all of the stuff that made it all come together, um, and with a smile the whole way through. Um, so yes, everyone has been helpful, but Mia, Mia stands out as the, um, the, the biggest, um, most dedicated person among all of us. Um, Marcus Strang for his work with the maps and with the future projects. Um, and again, a fantastic effort from Marcus and, and deep appreciation. And um, Rachel Rose and James Tatterton. Um, Rachel is the editor of the book. She also edited Jason's book and she has been phenomenal. Um, and I'm eternally grateful for her for making it happen, especially in the last few weeks. And James for his graphic design. Again, James was a graphic designer on, on Jason's book um, and he's done a wonderful job of laying everything out, organizing the photography and, and making the whole thing come together. Um, Finally, I'd like to thank our sponsors without whom this would not have happened. Um, as you can see, there are many, um, and we are very grateful for the financial support that they have given us um, during this, um, during the production of the book. Um, they will all receive um, hard copies in the next few weeks as the book goes into print publication. Um, but for now, 
Um, everybody is, um, should feel free to download the book from the AFA website. Um, there will be a link on the homepage um, in, by the time this um, goes to air, hopefully. Um, but the book is, is now ready, it's available, it's a free download, and we really do encourage everybody to share this as widely as possible. I would like to just finish by um, saying about the rear cover and um, the catchphrase at the top there, expect more. For me, this ended up summing up what the book really is trying to do. And we really do want to aspire, inspire all Australians to expect more out of their buildings, not to accept poor air quality, uncomfortable temperatures, condensation, mould and all of those issues. And while everybody knows those things aren't good, there is still in many corners of society um, an acceptance of that. And we're really saying that that should not be the case. So we encourage everybody to expect more, whether you're building a house, going to an office or going to a school or sending your kids to daycare. We hope that this resonates. Um, I hope you all enjoy reading the book. I hope you share it widely. And I really um, look forward to um, hearing the feedback from you all. So um, with that said, I'd like to um, pass back over to the rest of the conference, encourage you to download the book from the AFA website and have a great day and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much indeed.